Hello everyone. So this pre-lecture tutorial is going to serve to sort of finish up the last part of the first section of chapter 10, which deals with drawing Lewis structures. And in particular, as we get to the end of the tutorial, we're going to be discussing this concept of incomplete and expanded octets. And so let's go through a few Lewis structures so that we can see where this concept does and does not come into play. And then this way you'll be able to sort of approach these problems with a little bit more knowledge. So basically, let's begin by taking a look at this first compound right here, CH2O. By the way, this is the formula for formaldehyde. Okay, so basically I'm going to start like I would start any Lewis structure. I would begin by adding up the valence electrons that I can expect to be included in the structure. And so carbon is in group 14 of the periodic table. And so it will contribute four valence electrons. Hydrogen's in group one. And so basically each hydrogen contributes one valence electron, but there are two of those. And then oxygen, again, is in group 16. Of the periodic table and so basically that means I should expect six more valence electrons from the oxygen. If I add all this up, so four plus two plus six, that gives me 12 valence electrons total for the structure. And so again once we have our bank of valence electrons all assembled, now it's a matter of starting to draw the structure. And so we're going to put the carbon atom in the middle and then the hydrogen, two hydrogen atoms I should say, are connected to the carbon and then the oxygen goes connected to the carbon as well. Now basically what you're going to do now is realize that each of these single bonds contains two electrons within it. Right? Each covalent bond has one electron from each of the atoms that are participating in the bond for a total of two valence electrons per bond. And so since I've drawn three bonds, each having two valence electrons, then I would have to subtract six from 12, and that means I have six valence electrons left in my valence electron bank. Now, normally you would add those to the outer atoms, but you certainly wouldn't want to add them to the hydrogen because if you recall, basically hydrogens just have a 1s orbital associated with them. And so the 1s orbital, or the electron configuration for hydrogen, is already 1s1. So basically hydrogen already has one electron. As soon as you create a bond, then basically you fill the other spot in the 1s orbital. And so a hydrogen can only accommodate two valence electrons. So this is an example of an atom that has an incomplete octet, okay? Now, it's not the central atom in this case that has an incomplete octet. We would expect carbon to actually obey the octet rule, but hydrogen does not. So basically what that means is these six valence electrons, they have to go around the oxygen. So then that would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so once I've drawn those six electrons and that's it, I'm done with my valence electron bank. But there is a problem with this structure because if I go ahead and count all of the electrons that each atom has within the structure, hydrogen would have two, the two in this bond. So this hydrogen over here would have two. This hydrogen over here would have two. This oxygen would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so basically the oxygen obeys the octet rule as it should. But if I start counting electrons for the carbon, carbon only has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. And carbon should obey the octet rule but I'm out of valence electrons to add. And so this is the perfect example of needing a multiple bond in the structure. And so what I would need to do then is I would need to take a lone pair from the oxygen and create a double bond 
between the oxygen and carbon. So if I go ahead and redraw that, basically the structure, let me just make this a little bit clearer, for formaldehyde should look like that. Okay, where now if I count up, basically each hydrogen should have two valence electrons. The oxygen still has eight. I haven't removed electrons from the oxygen. I've just rearranged them so that they're shared electrons as opposed to lone pair electrons. And now if you count the bonds, there's one, two, three, four bonds around the carbon. And so again, keeping in mind that every bond has two electrons in it, that means that this carbon now has eight electrons and so it satisfies the octet rule. Now let's move on to this other structure down here. This is boron trihydride. And so let's consult the periodic table. Boron's right here in group 13. And so basically boron should have three valence electrons. Hydrogen, we already know is in group one. And there's three of those. Okay, so that means that hydrogen has one valence electron. And so hydrogen will give me one valence electron per atom. There's three of those. So that's three valence electrons here plus three more. That's six valence electrons for the structure. So then I'm going to go ahead and begin assembling my structure. I'm going to take the boron, put it in the middle, and I'm going to draw my hydrogens connected to the central boron. Okay, now if I count up electrons, this hydrogen has two, which it should have two because, again, we're filling that 1s orbital. That hydrogen has two and that hydrogen has two. So basically, each hydrogen has already reached its full valence, even though it's not necessarily eight electrons. But if I take a look at the boron, the boron has one, two, three, four, five, six, only six valence electrons. And again, we've already used the six valence electrons in our bank, so we can't add any more. And so this is our first encounter of a central atom that exhibits an incomplete octet. And perhaps the easiest way to visualize this is to think back at the Lewis dot structure for boron as an element. Again, if you think back to the very beginning of chapter 10, you did these sorts of structures where you put the chemical symbol down, you figured out how many valence electrons there should be. Again, there should be three because this is a group 13 element. And then you would draw a dot for each valence electron. Now, you have to understand that what we're modeling with these Lewis structures are covalent bonds. And by definition, that means there should be a sharing of electrons. And so what that means is, as the hydrogens bond to the boron, they will contribute one electron apiece to the formation of the bond. But once that happens, notice there are no more valence electrons for the boron to actually form an additional bond. That's it. Basically, once you actually form those three bonds, boron's valence shell is about as complete as it's going to be. There are no more valence electrons available for boron to form an additional covalent bond in this instance. And so as a result, the structure stays as is, and boron has an incomplete octet. Now, the only other element besides hydrogen and boron that really exhibits this for covalent bonding would be beryllium. Beryllium sometimes can form covalent compounds, and then in those instances, if you draw the Lewis dot structure for beryllium, basically we know that there should be two dots for two valence electrons. When beryllium forms bonds with those two valence electrons, and that's it. And so basically beryllium will only form those two bonds because, again, it doesn't have a complete octet to fill. Now, what about this structure? This looks a little bit more difficult. This is the tri iodide ion. 
And so we're going to follow our same scheme. We're going to do one pair of iodines in group 17. And so what that is, is there's seven valence electrons, each iodine, but there's three of them. So that's 21 valence electrons. But this is going to be an ion with a negative charge, so that means I have to add one more valence electron per negative charge. So I've got one more valence electron, uh, one more valence electron, I should say, for a total of 22 valence electrons. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect the three iodines to each other. Okay, again, I've drawn two bonds. So that means... I've used four valence electrons. That means there are 18 valence electrons left. If I go ahead and start adding those 18 valence electrons, and again, I'm going to start with the outer atoms first. So I've got 18. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm done with the iodine on the left. Now I have to go to the one on the right. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Well, now I'm done with the one on the right, so now I have to go to the central one. So basically, that is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And so this is the final structure of the triiodide ion. But if we examine it closely, notice that the iodine on the left and the iodine on the right each have an octet of electrons. Basically, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, we can see that the arrangement for the iodine on the left is the same. But if I go ahead and count the valence electrons for the iodine in the center, I get a completely different story. Basically, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 valence electrons. And so here, this is our first encounter with an atom that has an expanded octet. But not all atoms do this. Basically, if I look at the periodic table, only those nonmetals that are in the third period and below have the capacity to expand their octets. Now again, basically there's been some debate within the chemical community, if you will, as to why this is. Um, one possible reason is, for example, if I take a look at iodine, iodine's electron configuration, if I draw the noble gas configuration, would be the krypton core, then it would be 5s2, 4d10, and then this would be 5p5. Basically, it's thought that, or at least some folks believe that, the d orbitals can get involved. Notice that basically the d orbital isn't really something that exists until we get to the 3d sublevel starting the transition metals. And so basically, for that reason, those electron configurations that have access to D sublevels have the capacity to expand their octets. And so that's pretty much the gist as to why this occurs. But again, one thing that you have to keep in mind is again, notice that I cannot expand octets for nonmetals in the second energy level or the second period. And so make sure that you're mindful when you're drawing your Lewis structures and be aware whether or not your central atom is a nonmetal of the third period and below and keep an eye out for those expanded octets. So if you have any questions, again, feel free to email. Um, we'll continue to discuss this over the next few days and probably into next week. So go ahead and work on the pre-lecture and we'll continue to work on this topic. All right, have a good night.